I know a lot of people think of the term, think of ego as something negative. E your ego is not negative. The ego is only negative when it's, when it's not appropriate, right? And there are times when the ego needs to be dismantled and reconstructed. Yo, Elliot. Yo, Elliot, I am inappropriate. I characteristically misrepresent social cues and often overstep conventional and conversational boundaries. Where I had previously labeled my unconventional social mannerism as charm, this past year I uncovered the appropriate label, Asperger's. Hmm. The new designation was a monumental blow to my esteem as I was left to revisit my life under this new light, revealing how truly abnormal I have been. Consequently, this past year, I chose to generally withdraw from uh, other humans to recalibrate myself. I felt overwhelmingly weak. Oddly enough, months prior to the diagnosis, I had started identifying others as humans, since I have always felt that I'm wired a little differently. Um, I'm grateful for the revelation as it was paralleled with many other beautiful realizations. I am a hero spirit that chose this journey and every second on my path is custom tailored for growth and enlightenment. I'm grateful to you and the other mentors who have led me to love myself and my path. The question is, was the revelation of my inappropriate nature for me to accept, embrace and incorporate going forward as I am? Or am I to take new awareness and develop loving control over my nature? I appreciate your thoughts. I like that term that you use, loving nature, taking control over, uh, loving control over my nature. That's how you say it. Develop loving control over my nature. And I think that's something that we're all doing. I think that's something for all of us to do because Robert Moore, who is the author of King Warrior Magician Lover, he was a, uh, a Neo Jungian. He, and he studied archetypes, and uh, as Carl, as Carl Jung did, he recognized that archetypes are objective patterns in the spirit world that, just like a Christian would say, in terms of demons, can possess us, and you can become possessed by archetypes. And the way we can we become possessed by archetypes is by becoming personally identified with them. And so I think that it was a little, my question here, my answer here is, is kind of twofold because on one hand, uh, it's good that you have this awareness of yourself, but then by, by, by labeling yourself as Asperger's, and I'm not saying you don't have Asperger's, but by giving yourself that label that has all its associations that has led you down a dark path of judgment, self-judgment, right? When you said that, you know, you withdrew from people and you wanted to recalibrate yourself um, is one of the surefire ways to be possessed by a, by a archetype of a thought form, right? And a, and a pattern, right? And so there are all kinds of associations with that pattern that you may just, that you start to take on and then it becomes you. Right. And so like uh, a union would say you became inflated, right, filled up, you become filled up with that. And it can happen and it does happen to all of us in various different ways. Sometimes they're good. Sometimes they're not. Sometimes the, in, what, let me actually put it this way. They're objective. These patterns are objective. Archetypes are objective. But how we relate to them. This is important. How we relate to them is important. And so uh, what he would say is that if somebody was filled with, a, say, like a warrior spirit, right? Like somebody who's just like a masochist. They just like they, they're tearing through things and they, they have no regard for anybody and they beat themselves up. And they're just like, you know, a, a hardcore masochistic warrior that will if, if it's too turned up, if that archetype is too turned up, it will it can destroy you. And we see this happen to people all the time. They take on a particular spirit and destroys them. If they take on the spirit of the king, pride will destroy them. If they take on the spirit of the warrior, that masochism will destroy them. If they take on the, the uh, archetype of the lover, their addiction will destroy them. 
if they take on the uh, archetype of a, you know, and there are so many different archetypes, but I'm just using these categories of the of the um, magician, their cleverness will destroy them, right? Their aloofness, their objectivity, right, will destroy them. And so you have this archetype that this pattern that is there, it's present, it's filled you up in a way, even in your mind now that you've leveled, labeled it and you saw what that did, it inflates it even more. But what he recommends, what Robert Moore recommends and what, what I heard you say so beautifully was you say take loving control over my nature and Robert Moore would say that you have to have a right ego self axis. That's what he called it. He said you have to have an ego self axis and the reason why that's important is because uh, you, you have an ego and the ego is what protects you from overinflation. I know a lot of people think of the term, think of ego as something negative. Your ego is not negative. The ego is only negative when it's, when it's not appropriate, right? And there are times when the ego needs to be dismantled and reconstructed. Right. But the ego doesn't like to die. And that's why when someone is egotistical, it means that, you know, your your current ego construct is not appropriate for what you're trying to get done in life. And when you're being egotistical, it means you're just not willing to die to that to that old ego. That ego needs to be broken down and, and reformulated to bet best fit the world you live in. And he called the self, which, you know. In a way, that's the archetypal world, right? I mean, we're using all this, you know, Jungian language, but it's the archetypal world. So he says that you have to have an ego, right? Which is your is the modulator. Your ego is the modulator, right? It modulates the the uh, the patterns, the, um, the 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 personality of the of the archetype or the demon, even, right? <laughs> right. Where you, that's, you know, that's a totally different story, but that's a matter of casting it out and not relating to it at all because it's trying to destroy you. It's better, you know, the truth is it's better to be objective of, about all these things and to, and to not, I personally identify with any of it. But you, but you're heading in that direction when you say take loving control over my nature. And I do believe that that's best. It's called self-control. It's called self-control. You might want to be eccentric and call, you know, like you said, you know, I have uh, unconventional social mannerisms that you thought was charm, which ends up destroying you. Like I think you've experienced, right? And maybe in the beginning it was charm. Maybe in the beginning it was helpful because it got you the attention that you wanted. But then you began to realize that everything that's sweet turns sour. And so that, that charm very quickly becomes uh, obnoxious, <laughs> right? So you're becoming obnoxious. And so you begin to recognize it because the world is, is reflecting that back to you and is basically asking you to modulate that through your ego. And so what you're, what you're in a way you're doing from this neo Jungian perspective is developing a new ego that modulates that energy in a, in a way that's most resourceful to the world that you want to build around you. I've been having this conversation with one of, one of my daughters uh, recently. She's got a lot of charisma. She's got a ton of charisma and it, it has helped her a lot as a child because people thought she was cute. She's so cute, right? And she's very extroverted, my daughter. And she's getting older. She's becoming a teenager and she's trying to still do the same things that people thought was cute when she was nine, but now it's obnoxious. And we've been telling her for a while, you know, especially her mother, because her mother can't can't stand her when she when she does these things. I'm more I'm more uh, accepting of it because I'm eccentric too. But we've gotten to a point where she it and the world tells you that you just need to be you, but I don't think that's true. The world says you just need to be you. If it feels right, just do it. If it feels right to you, just be that way. I don't think that's right because you're going to be miserable because the world is going to give you back what it receives from you. And if you're if you're obnoxious, you ain't going to get the result that you want. You could say screw you to everybody, but you don't live in a vacuum. None of us live in a vacuum. So she's having a hard time right now because we're telling her that, look, you and her argument is, well, why can't I just be me? 
Well, because being you, and, and nobody likes to hear this, being you is not good enough right now. It's not good enough for you to be yourself. What you're being right now is not a good self. It's an old self, and she's at that age where she's dying to her childishness, and it's a struggle. She's about 12 years old. She's dying to her childishness and like and starting to become a woman, so it's like a whole lot of internal conflict as well, right? 12-year cycles, 12 years old, right? This is where she is. Um, but it's the same for you. Regardless of where you are in your life, you had an awakening, an awareness that who you've been is not resourceful for what you want to be. And so you, you rein it in. You choose new ways of being. You set aside that which doesn't serve you. And, and by and by, through this process, you almost, you, in a way, reformulate, restructure, recalibrate a whole new brand new ego, right? I've had to do this. You've seen me do this, right? Even to the point where I've had to, somebody was, was commenting the other day. They said, I don't like this new Elliot who sits down when he talks, <laughs> right? Because it used to me standing up and I'm, you know, I'm very, I'm very animated. But I realized, you know, of course, they're lucky that I'm making YouTube videos because I've been speaking to you guys for the past two years sitting down and it's just the way things the way things are if i take the feedback that some people are giving me they would i would i would be trying to revert back to an old ego that old ego was good that old ego was great that old elliot was fine for that time but it's not gonna fly right now given my responsibilities given my circumstances given the way of the world as it is right now this is what's better and it's the same thing for you this is what you're gonna this is what you experience man and, uh, and I think you could do it. I think you're going to do a great job, bro. You get to be who you, who you really are. You get, to be, you get to be the most resourceful you for the situation. It's a conscious choice. It's a conscious choice to be a certain way. If you just live your life, if we just live our life based on how I, I should just be me, you're going to fail. You can't just be you. Don't just be you. Be the best that you can be. Done. Yo, it's your bro, Elliot. I hope you enjoyed that video. If you did, you ought to know that it was a clip from the coaching sessions that I have every week with my King Transformation students, where among other things, we get together for about four or five hours a week. We talk all things related to becoming kings in our lives, in fitness, business, and with women. If that sounds like you, and you want to join a like-minded group of men who are growing stronger every day in every way in this degenerate age, then it's real simple. Just follow me on Instagram, and then DM me the word King, K-I-N-G. Me and my team will get back to you the details to see if you qualify to join us. Hope to see you at our next meeting. Done.